Thanks so much for being here today. We are talking about Perry study and how oxytocin promotes closer interpersonal distance among highly empathic people. So here's a little background information about interpersonal space that we've discovered around 1966. We have four different areas that we find comfortable. Intimate space, personal space, public space, and social space. You can think of it like intimate is between romantic partners, and this would be the closest we feel the closest to. Personal space is like interacting with people that we see every day. Social is maybe people we see every day, but this is more of like maybe having to use louder voices to talk to people that are like across the hall or across the room or on the sidewalk when you pass them. And then our public space where we would use very loud voices to talk to people that we are uncomfortable being next to and we would probably use a lot of body language to get the point across. So let's talk a little bit about oxytocin. Oxytocin is a hormone that is found in humans and it's super important in social cues and it links right to positive social behaviors. Empathy is how people respond to the observed behavior of others. It's like imagining someone's point of view, but putting yourself in their shoes. And Perry was very interested in how people's personal space is affected by different factors. And Perry believed that this personal space could be influenced by hormones, more specifically oxytocin. The aim of this study was to test differential effects of the social hormone oxytocin on personal space preference in relation to a person's empathy ability. Perry basically wanted to know if highly empathic people would prefer closer distances over people who were not so much empathic and those less empathic people would prefer further away distances. So this study is a laboratory experiment and we basically use a mixed experimental design to allocate participants to variables. In both experiments one and two we used an independent measures design. And this independent variable of empathy was operationalized as having high empathy or having low empathy. Participants were categorized into two groups and they could either, they could be one or the other. They could have high empathy or low empathy. Now, this might seem a little bit complicated, but in both the first and second experiment, they also use a repeated measures design because the second independent variable was the treatment. So the first independent variable was empathy levels and the second independent variable was treatment. And the treatment was oxytocin levels or placebo. And this was specifically manipulated by the researcher. Now in experiment one, there was a third independent variable, but not in experiment two. And this independent variable was known as the condition. And this was also a repeated measures design. And the levels were stranger, authority or friend. So because it was repeated measures, it means participants were shown every single condition of the independent variable. And in experiment two, there was no third condition because participants were always asked to imagine their personal space in relation to the same person. This means there was no manipulation part in experiment two. The dependent variable was the personal space requirements of each participant. In experiment one, the dependent variable was operationalized as the preferred distance measured between participants and approaching person or object. In experiment two, the dependent variable was operationalized as preferred distance and angle between two chairs in the room. There were 54 male participants from the University of Haifa and they were aged between 19 and 32 and participants received course credit or payment for being part of the experiment. All participants started off with normal vision, no history of psychological disorders, and five participants were left-handed. Participants took a interpersonal reactivity inventory, and this is basically how we separated our participants into the, the empathy groups, high empathy or low empathy. So their scores on this scale set them up for that very first independent variable. So participants came to the university to complete experiment one, and then a week later on the same exact day, they came back to complete experiment two. Okay, so let's talk about the oxytocin administration. So participants were either randomly administered 24 international units of intranosal oxytocin at a 250 milliliter dosage or a placebo. And the placebo was simply a saline solution. 
And it's important to know these were nasal drops and the participants administered these themselves. The procedure used a double blind technique. So the experimenter didn't know which group our, our participants were in and our participants didn't know which group they were in either. After this was administered, our participants completed the IRI questionnaire. And after the questionnaire, our participants were given a nature magazine and asked to sit in a waiting room for 45 minutes. And because this was a repeated measures design, half of the participants would receive the saline solution while the other received oxytocin. And a week later, it was counterbalanced so the other participants received the opposite. So if you took oxytocin the first week, you were given the saline the second week, but nobody knew what group you were in either, either time. So it worked out great. Now, for the most part, the, the difference was the third independent variable for the experiment. So in the first experiment, we use something called the comfortable interpersonal distance paradigm, CID. Participants were shown a circle on a screen and they were asked to imagine themselves in the center of that circle. Then they were told to imagine another person approaching them along that radius of the circle. Then they were told to use the space bar on the computer to stop the participant wherever they were along the radius of that circle to a point where they felt uncomfortable. Now, although they were told to imagine themselves in the center of the circle, it's important to know the computer was generating this person, this, this fake person, and the computer had the ability to make this person a close friend, a stranger, or an authority figure, or even a rolling ball. And the animation stopped when the person pressed the space bar or the animation collided with the individual. There were 24 trials for each figure and 96 trials total. And then the researcher recorded the remaining distance within the circle from the stranger or friend to the individual. Now in experiment two, after doing the trials of uh, oxytocin or the saline solution, the participants were told they were going to sit in a room with another individual and that they were going to discuss some topics. Participants were told that they were going to be shown different rooms and to basically choose the room that they preferred. The computer this time showed a room with two identical chairs, a table on one side, a cupboard, a plant, and a lamp, and even a clock on the wall. The experimental condition was the preference of space between the chairs. The experimental group was the preference of the space between the chairs, which was 8 to 55 inches with intervals of 8 inches and an angle of the chair positioning, both facing each other at 45 degrees and 90 degrees. The control condition was actually the distance between the table and the plant, which was 80 to 125 inches with intervals of 8 inches, and the angle was similar at 45 degrees and 90, both facing each other. So some of the results from experiment one showed us that the participants need for personal distance increases with the less well-known the other individual is. Oxytocin levels were found to decrease the mean distance in the high empathy group, but had the opposite effect in the low empathy group, just as hypothesized. In experiment two, we saw there was a preference for distance of chairs, but not for the angle of the chairs. Participants with higher empathy chose closer distances between chairs, and the opposite was shown for those with low empathy. So in conclusion, the administration of oxytocin enhances social clues in opposite ways for individuals with different empathetic abilities, supporting the idea of social salience. People with low empathetic abilities respond to oxytocin with a preference for increased personal distance, and those with high empathetic abilities respond to oxytocin with a preference for decreased personal distance. And previous research also shows that when it's a friend, you want to be closer to them. When it's a stranger, you want to be further away from them. And I think a lot of the results are just things that we kind of already know and already feel about ourselves.